Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to simplify this expression right here. So we have parentheses, C minus D, parentheses, uh, close parentheses, minus open parentheses, C plus D, close parentheses. So we want to simplify this down to its simplest form. That's what it means to simplify in algebra. And uh, in this particular problem, there's a couple of little uh, areas that a lot of students tend to make mistakes with. So be careful when you do this problem. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to, of course, show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to show you step by step on how exactly to simplify this uh, expression. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so here we are dealing with a, a variable expression. This is the kind of stuff that you will learn like uh, in a uh, pre-algebra course, okay? And I just wanna just tell you real quick before I show the answer, uh, for those of you that are taking pre-algebra, you might kind of say to yourself, oh, this is the course you take before algebra, right? It's like pre-algebra, right? It makes sense, right? You're taking a course before algebra, so maybe in pre-algebra, you're not really doing algebra. Well, that's not the case at all. Pre-algebra, in fact, you are doing pretty much algebra. In pre-algebra, it's just not at the level that you are doing in algebra one. Okay, so when you're just thinking about um, the algebra sequence, it's typically pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, in general, things like this. This is just one big continuation of learning algebra. All right. So if you happen to be in middle school, middle school and taking pre-algebra, just you know, just so you know, you are indeed taking algebra. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer here. So the answer is what? Well, the answer is negative 2d. Okay. So that is what that uh, expression is when it is fully simplified. Now, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a thing or two about simplifying variable expressions. They'll be very impressed with that information indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. Now, this is a pretty easy problem, but it's also easy to make mistakes. So one of the things that you need to really be careful with in mathematics, okay, especially in algebra, I'm kind of putting a little flag here, here, if you can see it, uh, I'm going to highlight this, like pay, pay special, special attention, is when you see subtraction signs, okay, these, you know, addition signs, one thing, but when you see subtraction uh, operators uh, in algebra, you really want to be on high alert, okay, because a lot of students just tend to kind of, you know, uh, make errors when it comes to when it's, um, they're dealing with subtraction operators. So when you're seeing subtraction operators, you know, like here, differences and stuff going on, you have to really be on high alert. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So we have C minus D, okay, all this, and this is what we call a group. These are grouping symbols, parentheses are grouping symbols. Uh, these could be in brackets as well. It doesn't make a difference. A bracket and a parenthesis and a little squiggly bracket like this are all uh, the same thing. They're just they're grouping together this sum and this difference. Okay, so we're finding the difference between these two groups. Now, outside of this group here, this sum, we have a minus sign. Okay, but technically speaking, this is a minus one. Okay, so you need to understand that, right? Right here is a 1. Now, you don't have to write a 1, but I want to make sure you understand that the value right here is 1. Okay, there is a number in there. It is a 1 just kind of hanging out. And typically, we don't write uh, write 1s. So let me just show you real quick here. So if I have a variable um, expression, let's say I have 2x or 3y. Now, if I have x or y... You might say, well, there's no numbers in front of these x's or y. No, no, no. There is indeed a 1. Okay, so 1 would be the coefficient uh, there. We just don't uh, write them uh, typically, right? So 1x would just generally just write as an x. 1y would just write as a y. But you need to understand that, in fact, there is a 1 there. Okay, now I bring that up because it will help uh, some of you out there not to make a uh, mistake. Okay, now if you had, let's suppose I had another number here. 
uh, some of you would buy, you know, um, see this problem is a little bit easier. So, whoops, uh, let's see. What if I had a negative, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Just want to make sure. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to check something, make sure I didn't do anything wrong in my solution. But what if I had like a negative two here, all right, or negative uh, three, whatnot? You'd be like, oh, okay, that's a number. So you might be thinking to yourself, oh, I have to use the distributor property, okay? Because that's what you have to do here. You have to use the distributor property. So here we have this negative one, and we're going to want to take this negative one and distribute uh, it to this inside terms right there. Okay, so for those of you who forgot what the distributor property is, let's just do a uh, fast review. So if we have 2 times x plus 4, that's going to be equal to 2x plus 8. Remember, this outside a number being multiplied by a sum or difference, you're going to distribute it in to the inner terms of that sum or difference like this. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 4 is 8. So again, this is an illustration of the distributor property. Now, if any of this stuff here that I'm doing is not quite making sense, you might want to check out like my pre-algebra course just to kind of brush up on these basic concepts. Okay, so now we're going to go really uh, careful here because we're dealing with these negative signs. So it's going to be negative 1 times C. Okay, we're going to distribute that negative 1. Okay, that's what we're doing here. Negative 1 times negative C is going to be negative 1C. Okay, now you can write that as negative C, and most of you probably would do that. That's perfectly fine, but that is a negative 1C. But in this case, I'll just drop that one uh, from writing it there. Uh, but just so you understand, that's negative one times that C. That's a negative one C or negative C. So here now I have this negative one times D. So negative one times D is negative D or negative one D. So I'll just write that as negative D. Okay, so what do I do now? Well, at this point, you might be saying, well, there's still some parentheses over here. Well, there's nothing here to do, right? This is just a variable, uh, a difference here, variable expression. So it's okay. You can drop the parentheses here, uh, just if this helps you think about how to do this problem. So now we're down to C minus D minus C minus D. Okay, now let's take a look at what we have here. So I have a C here and a negative C here. So those are going to cross uh, each other out, okay, cancel each other out. So C minus C is zero, and I'm left with negative D uh, plus another negative D. So how many negative Ds uh, do I have here? I have negative 2D. Okay, so again, some of you might be saying, boy, you know, you took a long time to explain this problem. You know, I could have done this in like three seconds. Listen, I know you could have done it uh, one, two, three real quick. And most of you are like, okay, this is going to be negative C. That's minus D, C minus D, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the deal. I'm going to tell you right now from decades and decades of teaching mathematics, uh, you will make math errors, okay? I make math errors. Anyone that does math uh, makes errors from time to time. The name of the game is to reduce the amount of errors you make. So how do you reduce the amount of errors you make, okay? Well, obviously, one, you need to know what you're doing. Uh, that definitely helps. Um, but here are some other things you need. One, you need a major, major uh, focus and concentration. When you take, when you do a math problem, think of it as if you're like driving a car. Okay, are you going to drive a car and be like somewhat focused or somewhat, you know, concentrating? No, hopefully not, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're going down the road. You want to stay in your lane. If you're like, ah, I'm, you know, I'm going to just kind of uh, not focus on driving, then you start, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Obviously, you got to be continuously focused to, you know, to be successful in driving. Uh, in mathematics, it's, it's the exact same thing. You have to be continuously focused, and that is a habit, and that is a skill, because that's the first thing. The second thing is you need to be neat, okay? You have to be super neat. If you're, like, sloppy and you don't understand what's going on, then, you know, you're not going to be able to read your own work. You have to be neat, okay? The next thing you need is you need to be organized, okay? So, in other words, you need to show each step in a logical, clear way, okay? So if you could, if you know what you're doing, you understand the concepts and the skills involved, and you're continuously focused, you're neat, and you're organized, and you practice this way, then you're going to reduce the amount of errors you make down to very, very small percentage, okay? But 
you know, does, you know, anyone who, you know, does math long enough, you know, do you do every single math problem right? Even if you know what you're doing, absolutely not. Okay. That's just not the real world. Okay. So anyways, uh, the only way you're going to learn this stuff is to practice this way and to see other people do math and you want to uh, successfully so you can model, you know, what they're doing. All right. So if you need help with algebra and you want to see how it's you know, kind of properly done, uh, you know, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. And uh, for this particular level of math, I would definitely encourage uh, maybe like my pre-algebra or algebra one course if you need additional assistance with simplifying variable expressions. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.